It is easier to imagine the end of the world than the end of shopping. Sure, the last retail mammoths of the 20th century are on the brink of extinction, but the curious vacancies they leave behind raise many questions about what comes next. Re retail industry has changed a lot since I was a kid, but you always hear it, retail's dying, right? The, the physical representation of a store where you have a door and you walk in and there's like a, a counter and you order something, yes, that, that form of, of retail, I think, could perhaps go extinct. Liminal space, physical space, retail space is what the courtyard was within the Venetian Renaissance. That is where all ilks, backgrounds, demographs and communities coalesce and overlap. I think in coming at the heels of two, almost three years of the pandemic, um, certainly has, I would say, upended the expectation of what retail is in some cases and further solidified what it needs to be. In fact, we're in the midst of a retail renaissance, whether that looks like shopping or not. This is a unique moment where all that was solid has melted into air, like colliding galaxies, the real and virtual emerging to form a wholly new reality. The shopping is now more a kind of catalyst for a kind of fast culture or a popular form of culture. The modes of shopping have multiplied over the years. We've gone from shopping in stores to online on mobile apps, during live shopping events on social media, in games, on chat, the metaverse, we're talking about the reintroduction of, of retail and what retail can truly offer. It's almost an extension of digital space to a degree. We're so interconnected digitally, right? You can reach far more people through the digital side of stuff. One retail space in one smallest part of a city doesn't go very far, right? Internet has completely transformed the way we shop. Customers today have a wealth of information at their fingertips and they're more aware and educated than they've ever been about their choices. In the past, shopping meant going to a store and flipping through racks of clothes, and that's how the discovery process happened. But today, the discovery starts online for the majority of store sales. The store is becoming a place to see the product in real life and get advice. And over the years, as commerce has shifted online, and as social media has grown and has fueled contemporary culture, you see commerce and culture converging on people's phones and becoming more intertwined and omnipresent in people's lives. The concept of branding was invented by companies trying to guarantee the quality of their products. But what does that mean at a time when brands have become communities? Culture has always been kind of flirting with consumerism. And I think consumerism maybe in itself is also like a, a culture or a, a cultural form. It's it becoming more about meaning and, and community rather than experience, for instance. There's a way for retail to create a revenue stream and, and direct resources to people who need those who are fighting for their lands and their waters against these big corporate billion dollar multinational companies, right, that are coming through their territories. I thought it was pretty bold for us to walk that type of stuff down the, you know, the front of Los Angeles City Hall, but it was a big piece of just like sharing the realities of our communities and the stuff that people face, right? Um, but it is possible to certainly reimagine the way retail spaces work through understanding more carefully the, the framework for why a space even exists in the city and where it exists and, and to, to what scale. But retail for sure is, in, without even trying, um, civic and, um, and political in that way. The essence of retail is fulfillment. We're living in a really interesting time now. Our desired, let's say, footprint or dream world is, is actually echoed to us through social media. The customers want both speed and reliability. But it's also about accuracy and about being predictable. If a customer wants an order tomorrow or two weeks from now, our systems and processes are organized to deliver that speed and accuracy. Millions of items are received and stored in a highly organized manner and controlled by sophisticated software. But, uh, yeah, if you if you approach the logistics center as a, and you are no customer, you are not uh, 
driver of a truck, or so, so, you, so you feel very small and you don't know what to do here because places, uh, it's, it's huge, it's, uh, it's not built for humans. But if that once meant the logistics of moving products from A to B, today fulfillment has assumed a deeply emotional dimension. The simple possession of products no longer makes us happy. It is not enough to just have and hold. Because if a sneaker sits in a box, does it even exist? And I, I think it's important as architects, we understand the context that we're intervening in and we're designing in and for. You know, younger generations could be, let's say, this kind of switch where we say like, okay, how do we give meaning to something like sustainability in a consumerist society? Commerce is a performance of social dynamics, the essential ritual that makes, remakes, and evolves our civilizations. This is true, regardless of how an exchange takes place. I don't think it will actually go extinct. I think it will definitely evolve into something different, where maybe the lines of, of retail get much more blurred. Yeah, I don't know where retail is going to be in 10 years.